Good morning, everyone. We are the Hamans, and this morning we're reading from the Passion Translation, Romans 5, verse 1 to 11. Let's read together. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. Our faith our faith guarantees us permanent access into this marvellous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence, knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character and proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. For when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak and powerless to save themselves. Now, who of us would dare to die for the sake of a wicked person? We can all understand if someone was willing to die for a truly noble person, but Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly, and there's still so there's still much more to say of his unfailing love for us. For through the blood of Jesus we have heard the powerful declaration, You are now righteous in us in my sight and because of the sacrifice of Jesus you will never experience the wrath of God. So if while we were still enemies God fully reconciled us to himself through the death of his son when something greater than friendship is out. Now that we are at peace with God and because we share in his resurrection life how much more we will be rescued from sins dominion and every even even more than that we overflow with triumphant joy in our new relationship of living reconciled to god all because of jesus christ Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, that we can all be together this morning, even though we are in lots of different places. Um, thank you that we know your Holy Spirit connects us. Lord, I just want to pray for Ian. Um, I just want to pray that he's open to your word, that he's a vessel for you, Lord, to connect to us and communicate to us. And Lord, I just want to pray that everyone that's listening this morning or later on, that their hearts will be open to what Ian has to say and what you want to communicate, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we know our hope is in you. Amen. Thank you. Hope everyone have a lovely day. Back to you, Ian, in the living room. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Wasn't that a fantastic reading from the Hammonds? I just so loved the fact that... Um, Whenever there was a difficult word, then the voice of Father would bring clarity and bring the answer. And actually, as I was watching it, I felt like that was a little bit prophetic, actually, that for some of us, um, this has been a tough season. But just the fact that God is with us and that our Father is willing to speak for us at the times when we find things difficult or maybe we can't quite find the, the right words to say. I was kind of hoping this morning that if I uh, dry up, that maybe the voice of Cassie will come and rescue me from the background. Uh, maybe it'll have to be Heidi who's leading the meeting this morning. But I just love that fact of not being on your own and knowing that there's someone with you and alongside you, which is the reality that we all have with, uh, with Jesus and with our Heavenly Father. There's someone with us 
able to carry us through. And as Heidi said at the beginning, we're beginning to think about Christmas. I noticed looking at Facebook yesterday, a number of people already putting up Christmas decorations and Christmas lights and Christmas trees. And it was interesting because some people were commenting and saying, what, you're putting those up already? I, it used to be in the good, good old, olden days that people didn't put them up till right before Christmas. Then it seemed to move fo uh, forward and happen earlier and earlier in December. And here we are, middle of November, and people putting up Christmas decorations. But you know what? I can understand why people are. Because it's been such a tough year that to have something to look forward to and something that can be a, a sense of joy for us. It feels like for many of us, we're just desperate for that because 2020 has been such a tough year. And as we've been praying towards Christmas and how we're going to do Christmas this year as a church, the thing that we felt God speak more than anything else is this Christmas needs to be about the hope that Jesus brings into our lives. And if ever there was a time that we need to hear again words of hope, but not only that, but our nation and our world needs to hear words of hope and a message of hope, it's this year. And so all of our Christmas publicity this year is all gonna be about finding hope at Christmas. And the verse that we're picking up on is from Isaiah chapter nine, verse two, well-known verse, but it says, and isn't this so much a word for today? The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And the truth is 2020 might have been an incredibly hard, dark year, but God is with us. God is around. God is wanting to shine his light of hope. And the other sense we had around this Christmas is that God wants us to be, as a church, he wants us to be hope carriers. So he wants us to be those people who can bring hope to other people, people that are struggling because they don't know where to find hope. They don't know where to find that light. And uh, we realise that if we're going to be people who are going to pass hope on to other people, then first we need to be people who've managed to deal with our disappointments and our discouragements and experience God breathing that fresh hope into us. And so this morning we're going to look at the whole issue of hope. And can I just say this Christmas we're going to do as church, we want to do Christmas as well as we possibly can. One of the reasons for doing the advent calendars is we wanted to do something that's joyful and uh, fun and fun for the whole family. In fact every age group can uh, join in with the advent calendar. You can download them off the COVID-19 page of the regular emails uh, that we send out there'll be options to download them so everyone can get involved in it and part of the advent calendar is self-care so how do we look after one another well but also how do we think wider and how do we look after those people that don't yet know Jesus and who must if we're struggling how on earth must those people be feeling and so we want to be hope bringers and hope carriers this Christmas we're also going to do our regular church Christmas events really really well I'm excited about the some of the creativity some of the I think Holy Spirit inspiration uh, that God's given us about Christmas this year so on Sunday the 20th of December in the morning morning we're going to have an activity uh, all together all age fun nativity service and what's great about it is we're going to be leading some elements of it from here but we're also going to have little packets that uh, that we're going to drop off to everyone or that you can collect from us and it's a way that you can get involved as well so we're going to sing some carols but there's going to be moments in the service that we're going to stop and you're going to have activities to do at home that will make you a part of it and we don't know at the moment whether we're going to be able to mix with other households yet uh, it doesn't look like we will be able to by the 20th of December but if if we can then we can invite other people to join it or we can give them some of the activity packages so they can get involved with it as well so Sunday the 20th of December is going to be a big fun uh, experience a, a carol service kind of experience but then on Christmas Eve we're going to live stream a traditional carol service seven o'clock Christmas Eve uh, in the evening obviously uh, what we wanted to do was have an opportunity where we could just stop everything and focus on Jesus and make him the center of this Christmas. So put it in your diary even right now. Hopefully by then we may be able to mix with other people. Apparently uh, Boris is going to make an announcement about that tomorrow. So we'll find out more about that. But on Christmas Eve, wouldn't it be great for us all just to stop at seven o'clock in the evening to give an hour or so and let's turn our attention to Jesus and make him the center of this Christmas. And then we'll be back on Christmas 
Christmas morning as well. We've got a Christmas Day uh, live stream. We'll follow that with a Zoom call so we can connect with one another to make sure nobody's isolated or lonely or on their own this Christmas. So we've got lots of things planned for us as a church, but it's a great opportunity to invite other people to tune in as well because this Christmas more than ever, we need to find the hope and we need to live in the hope that Jesus brings. This year, as I say, has been quite an incredible year, hasn't it? Some of the statistics on the impact of that onto uh, our nation are starting to come through. And uh, some of those stats are are really quite shocking. So apparently 39% of adults in the UK are currently struggling as a result of the impact of COVID on their lives in 2020. 39%, apparently in young people, it's over 80% are currently struggling with their mental and emotional well-being as a result of the impact on COVID. I I think that probably means that actually a lot of our adults um, are are, are less honest in terms of opening up to people. But it seems like the majority of the population are struggling because of the impact of COVID. Some other stats that are interesting. In February of this year, 4.8 million people in the UK were struggling with their addiction to alcohol By the end of September, that number had risen from 4.8 million to over 8.5 million. So nearly doubled. That's that's more than one in seven people are currently struggling with an addiction to alcohol. And uh, what's happened, obviously, is that as the pressure of the year has gone on, people have been looking for comfort. And if we don't know where to run to for comfort, then we run to the wrong places. And obviously alcohol is one of the places that people have been running to for comfort. It's also the uh, latest statistics say that over 50% of marriage relationships are under more strain now than they were at the start of the year. And the three biggest factors leading to that in order of their impact is number one, it's the being isolated from a wider network of relationships. So our uh, relationship uh, have, have been more concentrated. So our time together has been more concentrated. And that's put a lot of pressure on people's relationships. The second most significant factor apparently has been homeschooling. Not quite the idyllic picture of mom and dad with extra time with the kids. Actually a massive pressure on families and therefore on relationships. And the third contributing factor is financial worry. So the truth is we have relationships under more pressure than ever before. We have mental and emotional well-being under more pressure than before. If ever there was a time that we need to push into the hope that God offers, it needs to be now. And the truth is, we know that the Bible, that God's word speaks truth. And in times of difficulty, what we need to do is we need to root ourselves in God's truth. And I just want to bring a couple of verses of truth about what God says, and particularly about hard seasons. And so truth number one, Isaiah chapter nine, verse two, quoted it earlier. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. Whatever's going on for you at the moment, however horrible 2020 might have been, the truth is God's light is bigger and stronger. When we think about the Christmas story, the time that Jesus was first born was one of the toughest times in the history of the nation of Israel. In fact, they'd been invaded by the Roman Empire. Uh, God had been seemingly quiet for over 400 years. And yet, a light shone and hope was born. Whatever's going on in your life right here, right now, God is around and he's wanting to shine that light into your life. And if we move on to John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, Jesus it says this about Jesus. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Some translations say the darkness 
did not understand it or did not overcome it. The truth and the reality is the life that Jesus brings, the hope that Jesus brings, uh, cannot be snatched away by even the deepest darkness. The word that's used there is the same word that Paul uses in Philippians chapter 3 when he talks about running a race and uh, straining for a prize. And he says, I haven't yet caught hold of that that I know that God wants me to catch hold of. It's the same word that, uh, that John uses in John chapter 1, verse 5. He says, the darkness can't catch hold of the light and when we stand in Jesus when we stand in God's goodness whatever darkness may come at us it cannot snuff out the life of Jesus but what we need to do in the middle of hardship is we need to make a choice that I'm going to put myself into the life of Jesus I'm going to put myself into that light and I'm going to let God's light shine over my life Often at this time of year, we would do a series called At The Movies, and we'd look at some messages that come out of uh, films. This year, there's been very little films uh, released because most cinemas have been shut through the year. Also, we'd have copyright problems if we tried to broadcast film excerpts onto uh, YouTube, which is one of the reasons that we haven't done it. But here's a great quote from a, a, a movie from Justice League and a quote from Lois Lane, but I think it's a really powerful quote about hope. In Justice League, there's a point where Lois Lane says, the truest darkness is not the absence of light. It's the conviction that the light will never return. I just want to say that again. The truest darkness is not the absence of light. So it's not the fact that light isn't there. It's the belief that light will never return. And I think for some people in our nation, maybe for some of us, watching this morning, we've lost hope that the light will ever shine again. And if that's you, then this morning I believe that God wants to do something about that, that hope might be reborn in your life. And I believe often in life there's a battle over whether we can hold on to hope. Because what the enemy would love to do is he'd love to snatch away our hope from us. And if you think about it, um, what snatches away hope is disappointment. And a definition of disappointment is to miss an appointment. Now, the reality for most of us in 2020 is we've missed lots of appointments we were expecting. For some of us in the church community, we've missed weddings and dates and celebrations that haven't been able to happen in the way that we expected them to. For other ones of us, we've lost loved ones and we've not been able to grieve that loss in the way that we normally would. For other ones of us, we've lost people that we really love unexpectedly. For other ones of us, we've, we've combated fear and we've not known where to run to. And you know, every missed appointment is an opportunity that the enemy would want to ride on the back of to snatch something from us. And in Proverbs, it, sa it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And that's what disappointment does. It, it has the potential to snatch something from our heart. But then the verse goes on and it says, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And I think what happens is God has a hope that he wants us to carry. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, we're born again to a living hope a hope that we can know the presence of God, a hope that we can live in the grace of Jesus, a hope that we're going to be united with Jesus forever, a hope that we're going to live for all eternity with him in heaven. There's a hope that God wants to be born in our hearts. But when disappointment comes at us, when missed appointments happen in our life, to begin with, there's initially, there's a grief and a sadness. There's a sense of loss. And I think for many of us this year, we've, uh, we're carrying under the surface a sense of, 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 of grief and sadness and loss because of all the missed appointments. I think I shared that a, a few uh, weeks ago, I uh, faced a difficult situation and uh, another difficult situation that was the end of a, of, of a journey of a lot of difficult situations. And for about a week, every morning when I woke up, I'm naturally an optimist, and a positive person. But every week when I woke up in the, in the mornings, I just felt like I wanted to cry. And I couldn't really work out why. And so I said to God, what is this? Um, and I felt like God say, this is grief. 
And this is the culmination of all the losses that you're feeling. And so um, at that stage, uh, coffee shops were open and you could sit inside as opposed to just do a takeaway. And so I went to a coffee shop and I sat down with a pad and a piece of paper. And I said to God, God, show me all the things that I'm grieving. Show me all the losses that I'm feeling the pain of. And just in a few minutes, I managed to list 20 things that were griefs and sadnesses from this last season. And then I went for a walk and I prayed through them. But you see, I realized that for every missed appointment, for every loss, there was a sense of grief. And as soon as I started to pray about them and give them over to God one by one, then quickly something started to turn around in my heart. But you see, if we haven't taken the time to process that stuff, we'll be carrying sickness in our hearts. And so maybe one of the things that God wants to do this morning is give you, when we come back to worship in a few minutes, maybe one of the things that God wants to do is give you space and time to process some of those losses and those griefs and those disappointments. And we've got a prayer team ready to pray uh, in the next few moments. Uh, we'll put on the chat stream, we'll put a Zoom code and you'll be able to dial into the prayer team, dial into the Zoom meeting. You'll be put into a confidential uh, breakout room with just two people. They'll listen to you, it'll all be confidential and they'll pray for you. But maybe this morning you want to pray through some of those griefs and those losses. But you know, if we don't deal with our grief and losses, it can get even worse than just a sense of grief and loss. It can turn into actual disappointment. And when it turns into actual disappointment, I think it has a danger of turning into something that can be really quite toxic for us. Because as opposed to just feel a sense of grief and loss and sadness, we start to get angry, we start to get resentful, and we start to blame. We start to speak out things and say, this isn't fair. We start to blame God. We start to get angry at someone else. And then something really takes over our heart. And maybe you've gone beyond. Maybe the pressure has been so much that this year it's taken you beyond just a sense of sadness and grief. And maybe you've started to get angry and say, this isn't fair. I, I deserve or I was entitled to. Let me tell you, that is a trap. And it's a ploy of the enemy to ensnare you in bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. And if that's where you've got to, God wants to encourage you this morning, deal with it, surrender it to me, yield it to me, because I want to bring you the other side of it. So for some of us, there's a sense of grief, there's a sense of loss. For some of us, it's a danger that is starting to turn into bitterness. But the true antidote is that we need to put ourselves back into God's love. You know, when we look at the Bible, God promises us, us that he will use hard times for our good and for our benefit. Now, a lot of us don't like encouraging scriptures like that, do we? But one of the reasons I chose Romans chapter 5 today as our reading is because verses 4 and 5 of Romans chapter 5 say this. They say, even in times of trouble, we have joyful confidence, knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. Patience endurance will refine our character, and proven character leads us back to hope. In fact, again, in, in 1 Peter, uh, Peter says that we should rejoice in times of difficulty because in times of difficulty, God can use them to strengthen something in us. And that's because I think often we get disappointed because we hope in the wrong thing. We hope in a beautiful um, magazine style TV wedding. Jesus never promised that we could have that. We hope for a a good career, for the number of kids that I would like to have or the marriage partner I would like to have. And we have all of these hopes and we pin our hopes in them. But at the end of the day, they're actually all worldly things. And the problem is if we put our hope in the wrong things, when they don't work out the way that I wanted it, I get disappointed. But the truth is, I'm made to worship God and I'm his. And Jesus promises me that I can face anything if I put my roots down in him. 
And part of being a follower of Jesus is to say, I'm not going to make my riches the things of this world. I'm not going to make my riches my wish list. I'm going to live my life for Jesus. And whatever comes at me, I'm going to meet it in him and I'm going to put my roots down in him. And you see, if our hope is in the, our circumstances, our circumstances can change. And boy, haven't they changed just like that in 2020. And what a shock that's been. But our hope cannot be pinned in the things of the world around us. Our hope has to be pinned in Jesus. And he will ne never let go of us. He will never let us down. He will carry us through everything, whatever, with the fullness of his presence. And Romans goes on and it says in verse 5, I love this. It says, this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. Because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who loves us, who lives in us. And you see what Paul writes in Romans is he says God's spirit is wanting to cascade down over you. God's wanting to fill you with his grace, with his love, with his presence, with his spirit. And as that happens, so hope will be born in you. Oh, God's with me. Oh, Jesus is going to carry me through this. Oh, I'm going to live life forever with Jesus. Oh, I've been forgiven of my sins. Oh, I can know God with me. And when I know that, the other things don't matter because I'm putting my root down into what I was made for and the one that I was meant to live for. Paul writes in Ephesians and he says the Holy Spirit is given to us as the first fruits, as the down payment of our inheritance. And when we experience God's Spirit working in his life, then God's presence uh, fills us and envelopes us and uh, surrounds us. And then everything else just drops away. It says in Hebrews that by the power of the Spirit of God, we taste the power of the age to come. And for some of us, we're carrying griefs and sorrows. For some of us, that's tipped into feeling angry and bitter. But you know, the best antidote is to put yourself afresh into the hands of Jesus, to invite his spirit to come. And as his spirit comes, then God's love poured out into our hearts means that hope starts to be birthed again. Hope starts to be resurrected. Hope starts to rise up again in us. And then we become people uh, rooted in God's hope and God's hope lights us up and enables us then to be light bearers, those who bring hope to other people. I'm not going to talk anymore. I've talked for long enough, probably over time. I won't dare look at the clock and see that. But if the band want to come back, I just want to give us some time just to respond to Jesus this morning. As Heidi said at the beginning, we've got lots of time now. We've got another 20 minutes, half an hour that we can just spend time worshipping Jesus, but inviting God's spirit to move afresh in our hearts and inviting God to come and birth fresh hope in us. And like I said, we have prayer team already on standby. So if you look on the uh, live stream, the chat stream, uh, there's a Zoom code there. You click on it. It will take you straight to a Zoom meeting. You'll uh, be greeted by someone. You'll then be invited the opportunity to go into a confidential uh, two-on-one uh, Zoom meeting where you can be prayed for. You can share your heart. Maybe this morning you are carrying a sense of grief and loss. And you need to have the opportunity to share that with someone. To, to maybe talk about what your list is, like I had to process my list, and just pray over some of that grief and that loss and that sadness. Maybe you're someone and you recognise that uh, resentment, bitterness and anger is trying to get a foothold in this season and you don't want the power of disappointment to rob you of your hope. Actually connect to our Zoom meeting. Be prayed for with someone. Repent of your uh, anger and uh, your bitterness, repent of your disappointment, step out of it and step again into God's hope. Maybe this morning you simply want someone to pray for you to be filled afresh with God's spirit, to know God's love cascading over you and uh, renewing that sense of hope and love. I'm going to pray and invite the Holy Spirit to come. Our musicians are going to lead us in worship. If you want to continue to engage at home, as we worship, just to continue to engage on your own, invite the Holy Spirit to come. But as I say, if you want to connect into our Zoom prayer team, connect into our Zoom prayer team. So do you want to put down your device for a minute? 
put down any distractions. And let's, in these moments, let's step into the presence of Jesus. Just lay everything down for a moment. Jesus, I want to thank you that you are good. And I thank you that you love us. I thank you, Jesus, that you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. And thank you you're here right now. Whether it's our kitchen, whether it's our bedroom, whether it's our living room, thank you that you are here with us. You are God with us. And we welcome the work of your spirit right now. And Father, where this year has been an incredibly hard year for so many of us, we welcome the work of your spirit. Father, where we're carrying grief and sadness, where we've been disappointed, Father, may the river of your spirit flow right now. May the river of your spirit wash through that disappointment. May your river of your spirit wash through that pain and that hurt. And may the river of your spirit bring cleansing and bring healing. Father, I pray in these moments as we worship, as we welcome your spirit, as we engage with you. Father, may your presence come close. And may we touch again your heart. And may we touch again your hope your presence, in Jesus' name.